I'm Champ Smith. Welcome to a brand new video. We got the fiance behind the bench press ready for the demolishness of 300 pounds. She came over and didn't expect anything less or more than 225, but I showed her what 300 pounds on a barbell really does. I came, I saw, I conquered. When you go for a PR, you need to warm up your muscles, get as much blood to the muscles as possible. Because if you don't, you're going to rip something very important, very vital to your success and longevity of working out. For me, and for a lot of people, your rotator cuffs need to warm down. Your rotator cuff actually has four muscles. Your supraspinatus, your infraspinatus, your teres minor, and your subscapularis. I've been doing bench press for over eight years now. I've learned a lot through this. I've got hurt a lot. <laughs> Both my shoulders and my wrists have felt the effects from bench press, but it's because of improper form. The bench press actually gives you overall strength in your upper body, in your upper extremities, your arms, your shoulders, your chest, and even your abdomen, which is your rectus abdominis, the six-pack abs that everybody has. They're just under a layer of fat. In order to see your rectus abdominis, your abs, you have to shed the body fat and work on the definition. You actually have to work the abs out. A lot of people argue that when you do your deadlift, your squat, and your bench, it will work out your abs enough for them to show and have washboard abs. But that's not the case, I don't believe. Nothing gives free. Nothing is free in the world. So you have to work out your abs. You have to work out your calves. A lot of people come to me and say, how do I grow my calves? Well, the secret is, you got to work them out like every other muscle. There's no secret to it. Sprinting will help a lot with your calves definition and growth, but it all boils down to your body composition, your fat, your muscle, your water, your bone density. It all boils down to what are you eating? What are you putting in your diet? You are what you eat. The nutrients that you have is going to be fuel for later. People don't understand that, and that's the key principle. Calories in, calories out. But for the bench press, right here, we're warming up, and I like to do it in five, ten pound increments. I go up five to ten pounds, and then I rep it out eight to twelve reps, and I go up and go up. And when I hit 185, I do eight reps, and after 200, I go anywhere from four to six reps. The reason I do so many reps on the bench press is because I follow German volume training and method style of training, and it's always worked for me. I've had great success with it. My bench press has went up phenomenal every time I've, I wanted it to go up. Right now I'm trying to maintain the 300 pounds while I'm in a deficit. That is a huge accomplishment, I believe. But I'm actually running into a problem with my bench press. And a lot of you may relate, a lot of you may think this is crazy, but when I do my volume training, it takes me anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour just to get my bench press done. And after I do my bench press, I uh, have other exercises to do, and that will lead into an hour and 30 minute workout. My favorite way to train is isolation, to focus on one part of your body for the whole entire workout, to hammer it, to make it as sore as possible. But that might not be the most effective way. And if you study exercise sports science, you'll learn that 48 hours, your muscle can have potential growth again. It's ready to hit again. So you can potentially um, exercise your chest, your arms, your legs, your back three times per week at the most and two times for a good training program. Now I follow a push-pull leg workout. There's not many times that I actually dread going to the gym. I've always looked forward to it. There's some days I don't have motivation, but I still go anyway and at least hit my compound exercises, which would be my bench, deadlift, or squat. And everybody knows that. You're not motivated. But this, that day that you're not motivated, you need to look in the mirror and remember the reason you started. You have a goal. You have a dream. And this is the day to step forward towards your goal. I know it's hard. I know it's, it sucks to get up and to walk in one direction. The hard direction with all the resistance and life beating you down. But... This is your dream. This is your life. This is your vision. You got to keep walking no matter what. Sierra Crank. Sierra Crank. Try Crank. I can't talk. I get tongue twisted. 
Sierra came over just to visit her fiance, but she didn't know what she was about to witness greatness. 300 pounds up and over. I'm going to interview her after this clip. 300 the beast. Uh, I came, I saw, I conquered. How do you feel knowing your fiance can bench press 300 pounds? Does that make know. you excited? Of course. Cause look. That's why. What's more impressive about it? Your strong muscles. I don't know. Does it make you want to marry me more? Well, of course. But I already knew that. Knowing I can bench press 300? So there's no question about it. She was impressed. She was happy. she came come over, and instead of lifting 135 for 57 times, I lifted 300 pounds for one good easy single. And I got a smile out of it. She was happy. I was happy. I was high on endorphins the whole day. I didn't think about anything else except I'm excited I got 300 today in a deficit. I'm losing weight, maintaining strength. And that is one of my biggest goals right now. I was, one of my last sets with 225 after my 300 pound set.